All right, our next talk is about FME being the bridge between BIM and GIS. So first to set the stage, we need to know why would anyone want to extract information from BIM and move it into a GIS? One of the key reasons is for visualization, to understand the larger context in 3D about what's going on in an area. GIS is good for that. BIM is good for the details of one model. If we take one model, throw away lots of the pieces, bring it into an environment that can let us have a large area at once, then we can start to do visualization on a larger scale. So why would we want to, another reason why we'd want to do it would be to extract information in the 2D sense to assist with routing. GIS is good with routing, BIM not so much. Extract those 2D floor plans out of that BIM. Now we throw that into a GIS with the right uh, setup, we can start to do routing. And we definitely have seen customers doing that kind of thing. And I've got other people broadcasting with me. Um, so anyway, that's great. Good morning, whoever you are. Uh, why else would we want to extract from BIM? It's because we wanted to manage spaces. We want to view the so-called jelly cube and take a look at what's going on with the different spaces in our area. Visualizing them in 3D allows humans to more easily see patterns than we might otherwise see. Notice one common thread in all these is that we're generally throwing away piles of the information that was in the BIM, which allows a tool like FME to be very useful because FME allows you the flexibility to easily discard information or derive new, more um, useful information as the data is going through. So we have folks that have worked with us at the University of Washington, for example, that start with their projects where they get CAD and BIM results that come out, and then they synchronize that into the GIS to allow them to do things like room scheduling and safety and inventory things. So that's an example. We've also worked with people over at HOK, and I just saw that they are coming to the FME user conference in June to present a talk called are you, All Your BIM Are Belong to Us. So that's a talk that um, won't want to be missed. So thanks, Greg and Chris, for putting that together. We're looking forward to it. But they do things like check models, export DWGs that are more rich than the DWG export that you can get right out of Revit directly, create PDFs that are intelligent, create data that's good for enterprise data sharing. So that's what the folks at HOK do, and they're going to be talking about this in June in Vancouver. We recently did a survey of the folks that are using FME with BIM or interested in that, and out of the 120 overwhelmingly Revit used, which we now support on an export basis, working on being able to bring some stuff back in there as well. If you're interested in that, let us know. SketchUp, of course, very, very important. And we do have a lot of uh, folks using FME with SketchUp, and it is known to work very well. And um, Bentley Architecture, we're talking with Bentley, and Trimble is a good friend of ours, and so we'll look to support Tecla in the future. But the gateway to most of these things is solid IFC, and FME's IFC input and output is becoming unparalleled. For those that aren't aware, there is an IFC writer about to be born in, um, in FME, and if anybody's interested in that, please be in touch with us as well. How we do it for Revit is that we've added a plugin called an FME exporter, and you uh, see that inside of your Revit, does not need an FME license, dumps out a special file, which we can later on read. So actually, we can probably watch this video, maybe, to see how that works. So we go into Revit. We open up a drawing. We go in and find our add-in exporter. We grab it. And then uh, we choose our settings, choose our output file, and we let it rip. Yep, there it goes. And it does its export. And like a good cooking show, in a few seconds, we'll be back when it's done. And yeah, there it goes. And it's being paid. Oh, look at that. Now we're almost done the export. And with that in hand, now we can go over to FME and do our thing. So that's how the Revit works. So I'm not going to run these workspaces that would be used to do this sort of thing, but let's just look at some of the outputs we can have. So this demo takes a spreadsheet. And you know, I will try to find that spreadsheet. So let's go up here and look at demo one. And there's an input spreadsheet that's in here. If we bring up Excel. Here it is. and this has a list of all the objects in our plan when they were actually planned to be installed and when they were actually installed. And so um, we can start to see what isn't done and so on. This is all in the spreadsheet. If you think in terms of a spreadsheet, 
then that can be useful. But it's even more fun when we take and combine that spreadsheet with the Revit model and produce this. Here we have a building model in PDF, so um, my grandmother could use it. And, um, and we can uh, go ahead and woo, drive around in here. And we can turn various parts off and on to see inside. The parts that are red are behind schedule. The parts that are green are um, ahead of schedule. And the parts that are colored a little bit uh, brownish, well, they're neither. So you can get a, a good visualization of what's going on. That's a very simple workspace used in FME to combine the Excel spreadsheet, the Revit model, and out it goes. And we get that kind of an output. We can also go to KML. This is a situation of taking a building model and um, throwing away all the information except what's called the spaces. And Dave Campanis, one of our staffers here, calls this the jelly cube. And so here we go. Um, and if I uh, knew how to use Google Earth, I could tip this up a little bit. And now we can, whoop, don't drift on me. And now we can open this up. And I could turn off, let's say, the whole third floor so we can take a peek at the second floor. These spaces are colored by usage. Very helpful for a project manager. If I click on them, I can see the different um, things. This one's used for circulation. This one's used for instruction. This blue one is used for administration. So I can walk around this building and, um, and do various things with it. So that's the kind of um, fun we can have inside of using Google Earth as a visualization tool. These jelly cubes also commonly visualized in ArcGIS. And I'm sure the ArcGIS Pro app will gobble them right up. That'll be fun to be working with that in the future. Um, we can also take Revit and make City GML or go to ArcGIS. And here's an example of that uh, a City GML file that had been made and viewed. Um, and we can make nice, fancy floor plans. And you know what? I'll just off-road slightly. And let's see if we can see those floor plans yet um, today before we end this section. So here we go. There was um, a bunch of DWGs that were made out of that Revit, but let's look at the PDF. It's a four-pager. Again, FME can do multiple pages, um, and we're working on making that even easier. And so this was produced out of uh, Revit drawing, and uh, this kind of thing can be useful. Again, for some types of needs, this is a little better than what Revit itself can do. So that gives you a brief survey of all the things. Uh, what's coming up next? Well, we're looking at improving our IFC reading all the time. In fact, if you grab a 2015 beta, that's there. IFC writing is well on its way. So folks that are interested in that, please let us know. You are going to be getting it soon. People have called, talked about making a slim BIM before out of, um, out of uh, GIS. And so that ends this section. Uh, don't be afraid to ask us questions if this has piqued your interest. We have a full-length webinar on our webinar archive that goes into much more detail in each of those examples I've shown.